Well, good evening, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Welcome to the Christmas Eve service of the First Congregational Church of Concord Online. We're so glad that you are here and joining us either live in this moment or in the recording later. We hope that the service brings you a time of peace and hopefully a space of joy and celebration as well. Just a brief announcement that if you would um, like to share this service with friends and family afterward, I will be um, turning it around and putting it on Facebook and YouTube, and we invite you to share it with whomever you think would um, receive light and joy from this time. And also we will be sharing um, at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning our service after Christmas, and you are also invited to join us for that. That will be at 10 a.m. this Sunday on the 27th. With that, I'm going to begin our time together with a First Peoples Land Acknowledgement. We want to acknowledge that we gather as First Congregational Church on the traditional land of the Wabanaki Confederacy, the Abenaki people, and the Penacook people, past and present, and honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who have stewarded it throughout a thousand generations. This calls us to commit to learning how to be better stewards of this land that we inhabit as well. For our prelude this evening, we at First Church traditionally have done a 30 minute hymn sing before our Christmas Eve service. With Zoom, of course, that's very difficult. And so um, our um, previous organist and music director um, volunteered to join with me in creating a very short hymn sing together. Um, and so we, you will see a video briefly in a moment when I share my screen. Um, if you have the bulletin, you have the lyrics of the three hymns that will um, be shared in that video. And so I invite you to settle in with me as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship on this holy night as we share together in our hymn sing and prelude. Our first hymn for our hymn sing tonight is the first Noel, and we will sing verses one and two.
hymn tonight is Angels We Have Heard on High, and we will sing verses 1 and 2. by setting our intentions for worship tonight. An intention is essentially a focus. And so we invite you to take this moment to choose a focus for yourself for worship.
I now invite you to join with me in our call to worship as is given in our bulletin. And I invite you to join with me on the bolded text. Sing to our God a new song. Sing to our God all the earth. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Peace on earth to all. The heavens are telling the glory of God. Let the earth rejoice. Let the trees of the forest sing for joy. Glory to God in the highest heaven, peace on earth to all. And let us continue by sharing together our opening prayer. Emmanuel, today we celebrate your coming and rejoice in your promises. We joyfully welcome you to this world and celebrate your presence in our lives. We hear the glad tidings of the angel voices. We come to experience this good news of great joy for all the people. We are here, we are ready, O oh God. Let the light of your love break forth, amen. I invite you to join with me in singing our opening hymn, Joy to the World. Adele will play the melody all the way through for us first. And then I invite you to join with me in singing. Adele, when you're ready. For joining. And now we set to lighting our candles of the Advent wreath. And I invite you to join with me on the bolded text. And I will pause to light each candle. Advent, arrival, appearance, return. Hope, peace, joy, and love, bringing wholeness find their places in the coming of Jesus. Tonight on Christmas Eve, we kneel with families in our homes all over the earth in the presence of the Most High. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep shadows, on them light, Christ's light shines. As we have been warmed by Christ's light, let us share the light.
As we have been found by Christ, let us seek out the lost. As we have been liberated by Christ, let us set the captives free. How perfect it is that God would send a child to lead us. The voice of God was heard in the cries of a baby. And that sound reminds us that God cared for us enough to be with us, to save us from the powers of death and destruction and end our time of hiding in the shadows. We light this candle knowing that Jesus is born, that love and light has come to earth. For to us, a child is born, the anointed one whom God sends to bring peace and light, freedom and reconciliation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Tonight, as a part of our story of Christmas, I have decided to weave in a guided meditation by Father Thomas Catucci, because I think one of the things that I know I need is in a re-embodiment of this story, a feeling of groundedness. And so before I share a holy night, I invite us to start with a prayer as we enter again the story of Christmas. Jesus, be with us as we hear and enter again into this story. Guide us, for we trust in you and in your Holy Spirit, directing our thoughts and our dreams to discover you anew in our lives. Guide us in peace. Be near to us, we pray. O oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appears and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh no When Christ was born, O oh, night, divine, O oh, night, O oh, night divine, led by the light of faith serenely be. With glowing hearts, by his cradle we stand. So led by light of a star sweetly gleaming, here come the wise men from the Orient land. The King of Kings lay thus in lonely manger in all our trials, born to be our friend. He knows our need. To our weaknesses is no stranger. Behold your King before him blow the band. Behold your King before him blow the band. True. 
taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is a brother and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we. Let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise his name forever. His power and glory forever more proclaim. He is power and glory. So now I invite you into this story. But first, as we enter in with the space of reconnecting and grounding. And so I invite you to soften your gaze, to get comfortable in your seat. If you would like to close your eyes. And I invite you to travel with me past the sunset into the night sky of a winter in ancient Israel, gliding over a huge desert. You can see a large cliff ahead of you come to rest on that cliff, overlooking the desert. You are very safe and nothing can harm you. The heat of the desert has cooled. It is winter but still warm. Feel how pleasantly comfortable you are. Look around you. Ahead of you is the vast expanse of desert outlined in moonlight. Breathe deeply and notice how clean the air is, how clear and how sweet. Overhead, you can see a multitude of stars that twinkle and blink above you. There are so many stars as if you are standing in the middle of all of the constellations. As we gaze at the stars in our mind's eye, let us hear now again from the Gospel of Matthew chapter one, verses 18 through 25. And I invite Sarah Nichols to unmute and to share this part of our Christmas story. Matthew 1, verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, 
he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. I now invite you to join with me in singing the first two verses of Away in the Manger, and Adele will play through the melody for us first. to return in your mind's eye to the desert, to the cliff. And I invite you to turn around and to see the most wondrous gathering of stars imaginable. There, just to your right, a star that seems brighter than the rest near the horizon, as if two or three stars cluster together an incredibly bright mark in the sky. They seem to hang a little lower than the others, as if pointing to the earth, pointing to some place in the desert. They blink, they pulse, as if they want you to notice something special. Leaving the cliff and flying towards those bright stars on the horizon, Follow your instinct, follow your curiosity, follow the star. Look down and notice as you fly a few tents huddled beneath you on the desert plateau. You can see their campfires flickering and glowing. Let us now hear the continuation of the story by the gospel writer Luke in chapter two, verses one through seven. And I invite Carol and Tim and Jim to unmute. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them at the, in the inn. I invite you to join with me in song once again, singing the first and last verse of Jesus, our brother, strong and good, 
Adele will play through the melody for us once, and then I've asked the Hovey Wildman household to lead us in this hymn. our brother strong and good was humbly born in a stable rude and the friendly beasts around him stood Jesus our brother strong and good thus all the beasts by some good spell in the stable dark were glad to tell of the gifts they gave Emmanuel the gifts they gave I invite you to return in your mind's eye to our flight over the ancient desert in Israel. And as we continue to fly, we fly towards the outskirts of a city up ahead, a city with thick walls and heavy, thick and heavy walls, an ancient city with many streets, with flickering torches in the doorways, passing a large building you can hear voices and the noise of people eating and drinking. You can hear laughter and singing and it's crowded, overcrowded. Continue flying on, gliding over the farthest city wall, back into the quiet, to the countryside. Up ahead, you can see a ridge of small hills then coming nearer, you see openings, the entrances to caves. One seems to glow, lit with a large campfire at the entrance. And above, the star cluster seems to point there, as if you were standing directly beneath the tail of a star. Land here and rest here a moment outside the cave by the campfire. And as we rest outside of the cave, let us hear the continuation of the Christmas story from Luke chapter two, verses eight through 14. And I invite Rebecca Massini to unmute and share. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone round them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and singing glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. I invite you now to join with me in singing our next hymn, What Child Is This? We will sing verses one and two, and Adele will play through the melody for us first.
child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthem sweet, while shepherds watch are keeping. Is this is Christ the King, whom shepherds God and angels sing? Is this to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary? Why lies he in such mean estate, where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian fear for sinners hear, the silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds, God, and angels sing. This is to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. As you stand at the entrance of the cave, warmed by the campfire, look around and listen. Hear the muffled sounds of many sheep bedding down for the night. As you walk through the flock of sheep, they part quickly, making a path for you. Up ahead, several men sit and lean close to the opening of the cave. Two are elders with white hair. There are a couple of younger men and three young boys, just children. They all wear soft, warm animal hides and sandals and they carry wine skins and long staffs. They turn and look at you silently and they smile, their faces almost glowing with wonder, with joy. A wonderful thing has happened. God has done something great here, now, and you are a part of it. The shepherds seem proud, happy, and they step back out of your way as if they had been expecting you. Is there anything you want to say to them in your mind? Anything you want to do in your mind's eye? If so, I invite you to do so in this moment of pause. And let us now hear the completion of our Christmas story for tonight from Luke chapter two, verses 15 through 20. And I invite Eleanor and Phil to unmute and share. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. <clears throat> and all who heard it were amazed what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard heard and seen as it had been told them. 
Dear friends, I invite you to return with me in your mind's eye to the entrance of the cave where the shepherds are pointing, pointing towards the entrance, guiding you in. And you approach slowly and enter and look around. There are cows, a few goats, and a donkey. And everything in the cave is hushed. Even the animals are so satisfied, so still. Beneath you, there is soft straw to walk on, dry and crisp. Step closer into the light. There are two figures resting beside another flickering fire inside the cave. You can feel the warmth of the fire on your face. A woman holds a bundled baby sleeping quietly. The husband looks so proud of his wife and the newborn. He turns to you to welcome you, to lead you to the mother and the baby. Is there anything you want to say to him in your mind? Anything you want to do in this moment? If so, do so in this moment of pause. The mother leans against a thick pile of straw. She holds the child close to her, cradled in her arms and wrapped in strips of cloth. Then she looks up into your eyes and smiles. She is so very proud. She lifts the cover from the baby's face so you can see the baby, beautiful, happy, blinking in the firelight. Is there anything you would like to say to her in your mind? Anything you want to do in your mind's eye? If so, please do so in this moment of pause. The light from the fire seems to make the baby's face glow so bright. And something deep within you knows that God has been born into the world here, now. God has become human, just like you. God has been born a baby. Then the mother invites you to come closer. She raises her arms, offering the child to you to hold. She slides the newborn baby into your waiting arms. You can feel the warmth, the softness, the movement of gentle new life, the life of God in your arms, fragile and alive and so real. Is there anything you would like to say in your mind, anything you would like to do in your mind's eye? If so, please do so in this moment of pause. Mary then gently, carefully takes the baby back into her arms. She tells you that you also have God within you and God must grow there too. Your task is to bring God to the world as well. She hugs you in her arms with the infant baby between you and thanks you. She nods to you and you know now that within you rests Jesus, ready to grow, 
ready to use your hands and to love others with your heart, the heart of Christ. Be at peace. Know that God will always remain within you and will never leave. Know how sacred you are. Feel the loving heart of God within you and be at peace. As you come back to this present moment, know that God is still with you and will never leave. You are not alone and be at peace. When you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes or come back to this moment. And I invite you to sit quietly for a moment and think about what you've experienced and be at peace. As we move from this time of story and song and meditation, I invite Tim and Jim to unmute and share with us their brass anthem. During Advent, uh, Pastor Amelia used this following uh, carol tune from the uh, 1600s to help us own the sadness and grief that we all have, especially this year during Advent. And for me, the power of this beautiful melody uh, helps to represent the transformation that happens this night as birth uh, brings us through from our sadness to a time of great joy. And the mystery of that um, birthing process is in this melody for me. Thank <laughs> Thank you, Tim and Jim, very much. It has been an intense year, which has led to a very emotional Christmas Advent season. And I felt moved to share that guided meditation and amidst our scripture, our sacred scripture, because one of the things that I have found during this time is a sense of being disembodied realizing just how much being in connection with other human bodies, human beings grounds me. And without that, I find how drifted I, I can feel myself. And so I invite you to remember what it is that you experienced in that meditation. To remember what it is that you said or did or did not do with the shepherds, and with Joseph, and with Mary, and with little baby Jesus. 
know that no matter what happens, no matter where you are in your life, you are invited and welcome to go back into that cave at any time. And the reality is that that cave, that holy space, that moment of love and joy lives inside of you. And you can go there whenever you wish. Depending on what happens in this coming year, there may be moments of joy in which you want to go into that cave and share as you hold the sweet baby Jesus, the joy that you have in your heart. And there may be moments in this coming year where your heart is filled with sorrow and the invitation is the same to go into that space and hold baby Jesus and share your sorrow. And that through that sharing, you will find yet again another moment of wonder and awe. That in that moment, there will be chance to celebrate as there is this holy night. However it is you choose to celebrate this night, Christmas day tomorrow and this Christmas tide, be it soft and gentle, be it loud with lots of music and singing, regardless of where you find yourself emotionally, know that God is with you. You are never alone. And in the moments where you do feel alone, I invite you once again to return to that cave, to know that God will always meet you there and seeks to reassure you of that love that is unending. Dear friends, Jesus Christ is born again in our hearts. Let us rejoice and be glad in our hearts. Amen. I invite you to join me in a moment of prayer as I share our Christmas prayer tonight, which is attributed to Robert Louis Stevenson. Loving God, help us remember the birth of Jesus that we may share in the song of the angels and the gladness of the shepherds and the worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessings which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be thy children and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven. For Jesus' sake, amen. Dear friends, at this time, I invite you to join with me for the tradition that is probably more ancient than any of us realize of lighting together our candles and joining together in silent night. I am going to take a moment to close my curtains and shut off my lights. I invite you to do the same if you would like. I will light my candle off of the Christ candle in the Advent wreath and hold it out to each of you. Knowing that even though we may not be passing the physical light, that we are passing the light of Christ between us, no matter what. And so as we hold our lights high, our candles high, let us sing together the first two verses of silent, excuse me, verse one and three of Silent Night, 
and Adele will play through the melody first. Adele, when you are ready. Friends, I invite you to join with me in our benediction. A child is born to us. A son is given. His, he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. Christ is born. Merry Christmas to all. And we close tonight with our postlude, The First Noel. friends go in peace knowing that christ lives within you each and every day amen <laughs>